Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, Your First Day. The series where the story is made up, but the experience points very much matter. We got a giant game here and literally hundreds of items to collect and things to do. But don't worry, you can take them one at a time, or a few at a time, like we'll be doing now. Last time we joined a grand company and got our first job. But working is hard and we want to go back to school. This time we're going to take a look at another Q distraction, botany and mining. These two go together and act as a companion to fishing and are quick and easy things to get into. So pick up your hatchets and picks and get collecting a ton of junk. Starting off, let's begin with botanist. Get the class by joining the guild like any other. Complete the quest, put on your null tool, and equip some gear, especially the shirt if you have one left over from either of the other gatherers. And save this as a new gear set, like normal. Set your hotbars, and then open the gathering log window with the B key or log menu. Unlike fishing, this is basically the only companion you need for the vast majority of your time. Even when you get to the stuff that is more obscure. Every single item that you can currently gather, and I mean every item, is visible in here. If you can't find it in here, you, you just can't get it yet. You even click the map names in the locations panel to know where to look. And if you want to find a specific item, there's a text box at the top to type in the item you want to find. I mean it when I say this is the only companion you'll need for botany and mining. It's the complete opposite of fishing, which gives you no info basically ever. Preview all of the skills if you like, and know that the mining skills are all the exact same skills. For the entirety of this guide, no everything is interchangeable. But except the first quest, this one wanting latex, and make your way out to the North Shroud. We have one whole ability as a botanist. Try Angulate. Gathering nodes will only appear once you turn this on, no matter how close you get to them. But the moment you turn it on for the first time, you'll never have to use this button again. Walk up to your first node, which appear on the minimap if you don't see any within your peripheral vision, and start gathering. Before I go any further, read your active helps. Good reminder, good reminder. But here we have the gathering UI. Most importantly is the little checkbox at the bottom. Quick gathering. Whenever this is on, the first time you click an item is the only time you have to click it and it will constantly gather that one specific item until the note is spent. This will save you a lot of time as you progress through gathering. That's why I went over this before the normal stuff and then got you your first level up. If you don't do quick gathering, you will have to click the items over and over again, one at a time. Now, look at your traits and see that we have auto triangulate now for hitting level 2. Which means that anytime we swap to our botanist gear, triangulate will turn itself on. Much like a long lost friend, we can now take that triangulate button on our hotbars and toss it away. Now time for our second node. Let's turn off quick gathering and look at the gathering window as a whole. This little bag icon in the corner of every items icon is telling you it's something that you have never gathered before. Make it a point to never have any bag icons because you get a huge bonus for your first time gathering an item. These first few levels will be two and a half to three times the amount of EXP for a single gather. And while this is going to be very easy road to 50, the EXP from these can help you through the first few groups of levels until we get to the mid-levels. Further, we have three stats as a gatherer. Gathering, Perception, and GP. GP replaced our MP bar and we'll show this off soon. The worth of our gathering and perception is immediately visible. All items will have listed gather chance in the big number and the chance for a high quality gather below, to which we have a 0% chance due to not having any perception at all. We'll get into this later, but keep it in mind. 
But first we have our actual first skill, Arbor Call. This skill is extremely key in keeping your bearings while gathering in later levels. Right now, nodes are grouped tightly together in sets of four. Later will be much more spaced out, so keep this skill around. It also makes finding the next closest node easier. If you're just trying to find anything at all to gather, this helps as well. Next we have is the Field Mastery skill set. It comes in three levels, each exponentially more expensive but useful than the last. Gear is extremely important, and you quickly lose pace on higher level items. This branch is a measly four levels higher, and yet I only have a 44% chance to gather this at a base. For 100 GP, we can boost our chances for the entire node's duration by 15% with the second level. And since your average node has four chances, this is, in essence, a gain of 60% over the entire node, assuming the item needs the full 15% like it does here. But this is something to make up for a small gap, not constant large gaps. This is no replacement for better gear, except for the cheap 50 GP Field Mastery 1. GP regenerates only 5 at a time, and 5 points per gather. Your GP won't regenerate while gathering at a node like it would otherwise. The only GP you get will be from each individual gather. And to backtrack a little bit, if you hear a different sound effect, you know the gather failed, even if you don't see the message pop up because of looking away. But alright, turn in your 10 latex and get your reward. If you've been following along, this is the same thing you got from Fisher. So for me, it's something I'll be selling off later. But if it's the first one you got, put it on. But speaking of selling, as a quick note now, I have a couple other items from gathering one of everything for the purposes of the bonus EXP. You may end up doing the same. I do not recommend holding onto singles of an item, even for later crafting purposes. Sell these off, and only keep stuff you gather a chunk of, at least four of as a minimum, but there are some exceptions. I'll be regularly selling off my inventory off screen at multiple points. I recommend you do the same here or there, especially you free trial players with no retainer space to make do with. But now to make something very clear about what the gathering log says. The gathering log gives you the area name and the specific area you should find the item in. Maple Sap, just like the latex we just found, is in tree speak. Notice that this is no different to what latex would show if you used the map link. It will show you the name tree speak, not the specific position you are still expected to look around. Let's use North Shroud as the example again. These messy red lines are the general borders of how the map is broken up. So this shaded portion here is the entire area that Tree Speak refers to. So you are still expected to use your eyes. Use. Your. Eyes. Do it. As such, the actual location for Maple Sap is slightly further past the latex nodes to the west. Also, uh, you need 50 of them? This is a paltry amount to the real gathering you'll end up doing if you plan to actually use your gathering classes. You'll be gathering hundreds and hundreds of items. 50 is just practice for the real work. But by the time you have collected all 50 items, you'll unlock the ability to sneak. If it wasn't clear, or you didn't watch the Fisher video, which why wouldn't you, how dare you? Gatherers can't fight to any effect at all, and enemies with the red icons will aggro you on sight and beat you up and make it impossible to gather. But if you turn on sneak, you'll be perfectly okay to hug and pet the bird people. That'll make them stop summoning their primal, right?
but let's finish the quest and head back, and just barely be unable to do the next quest. So let's move on to our Grand Company provisioning missions now that we have those. We can see these at any time from our time is menu, control plus U for keyboard shortcut. Otherwise, it's in the menu area. But this time was asking for latex because it snapshotted to when I was level 1 because that's where you start. Not worth it, but we'll come back to this very soon since we caught this right before the refresh. Now gathering that last bit of latex hit me level 10, but let's head over to the miners to reinforce the lessons so far. And also get some extra gear while we level, because every piece is going to matter as a botanist and miner. Also, if you intend to craft, you'll want it. Again, do all the basic setup and let's look at the skills. Names and icons change a little bit, but they remain very, very similar across both classes. And they're so similar because they're the exact same skills. All lessons you learn transfer. So just like before with Botanist, head out, turn on the prospect buff, delete it after your first level up, get every unique item, and collect all the items you need for the first quest. A quick note, without the use of cross-classing, something unique only to gatherers, you can't see the nodes of the opposite class. We'll talk about cross-classing much later, because of a much more important reason to cross-class. For now, know that you can cross-class Triangulate and Prospect, but there really is no reason to. Now the level 5 class quests again takes us a bit further. Notice that the Spineless Basin is all the way to the south. This river here up north is roughly the breakpoint for Spineless Basin. Everything below this point is Spineless Basin but our nodes are right here to the east of our first quest. However, this quest is a good way to practice node cycles. Nodes, as I mentioned, come in sets of four, but you can gather in just sets of three. The order of the nodes can also matter, and these bone chips is a very good example. Some of the nodes are on top of the cliff, while others are at the bottom. As such, if we try to do counterclockwise patterns, we'll be way slower than a clockwise rotation because of the cliff. This is a rare thing, but proper pathing in your own play can make your gathering trips easier, more fun, and way more effective. It's also a useful skill later because of the three node rules. We'll get to this when we get into expansions. To easily swap my rotation in the other direction, I stop following the cycle and go to the node I've been ignoring. This will respawn one of the other nodes due to them working in threes. So if I was going A, B, C, A, B, C in a counterclockwise order, I did A, B, stopped, and then did D, and then went and did A again to begin a C, B, A, C, B, A ordering. If my wording confuses you, just re-watch the clip I've been using again. And to repeat, while unimportant usually, this info has very specific use cases that you will want to know as a higher level gatherer. This does actually have practical use. But while I was doing this, I hit the Grand Company reset timer, which is asking me for bone chips. Keep in mind, daily reset is around 11 or 12 Eastern, depending on daylight savings. 8 or 9 Pacific. And if we look at the clock in this clip, it's 4 p.m. and GC reset is on its own timer. Keep that in mind. But since I'm already collecting them, I'll grab 10 more bone chips since I am here. And they're a level 5 gathering item when I'm already level 9. So this turn-in will be a boost of EXP but a boost for a level 5. If this is the only way you level gatherers, it does work, I guess? But I often see people recommending leveling gatherers with just your grand company. But due to how it works, you could get turn-ins for far below your level until we hit later on. For comparison, 
here's a level 50 turn in mission after I hit level 50. Due to how things have evolved over time, do this for only the Grand Company seals. Even if you do get this little star on the left, which means you get double the EXP for the turn in, which my bone chips also had, still only gives me a full level. Better than before in terms of scaling, but really only worth doing if you got the star icon or want the seals. The EXP, wall better off at 50, is still not worth the extra effort in the time that it takes to gather the items, you could have done a leave instead. And oh boy, look forward to when we get there. But from this point forward, I'll be referring to Botanist and Miner interchangeably for basically everything for the rest of the video. They are truly that similar, and you really should grab both and level both at about the same time, at least up to level 25. And it will be very clear as to why. But our level 10 class quest is a job to collect 99 of an item. Like I said, 50 was chump change. This is double the amount. Also, it's 99 because that's what the original item cap was. Nowadays, the cap is 999 for most items. Be happy they don't make you do that. You'll be doing that on your own time, though. Trust me, you will. During these quests, though, we'll get some more interesting stuff such as preparation. This skill will allow you to turn on and off the minimum requirements to gain a chance at high quality items. While scaling works very differently as you level, it is very comfy to understand early on. I have 30 perception and the minimum for high quality crow feathers is 27 perception. This is a difference of 3 so I have a 3% chance to gather a high quality crow feather. We also got this skill on minor. But again, let me emphasize that this basic addition and subtraction only works this well because we are low level. It just makes for a very good example right now. Additionally, we do have a maximum base high quality chance. No matter how high you get your perception, even into the thousands at level 80, level 1 nodes will still max out at a 15% chance to high quality. There are ways around this low chance, but when it comes to basic nodes versus your stats, 15% is going to be your highest chance. But at least you can visibly see this, unlike fishing. But like fishing is the interaction with quests. The game only counts your current highest amount of an item, separating out no quality and high quality. Manually lowering the quality of a high quality feather will cause the quest to update that I obtained another feather, since it recognized the singular feather, despite not being the stack of 59. But before it became no quality, it was not recognized. Keep this in mind whenever you're gathering for a quest. And be ready to do the math when you say gathering 300 of an item for yourself. But for completing this quest, we got our offhand tools. All of the nodes we saw on the minimap up to this point were orange, gold, whatever color. But let's head out into the field and find the new blue nodes that have appeared. These will not let you use them unless you have your offhand sledgehammer equipped. So now our options have increased further. Botanists have this too, with scythes. The mechanics are all the same. But there are different animations, and you can learn what items come from which specific types of gathering. Say for example you are looking for logs in a new area. If you find a blue node for scythe usage, you know you won't find logs. You want the orange slash gold nodes to chop a tree. It's their way of helping you distinguish between nodes, even though one area might have five or six different sets of the same color. Brown is a tree, blue is a bush. But here comes the main event. Leaves in all of their glory. They take a bit more time and are a bit more active than fisher leaves, but offer just as much EXP as those 
if not more. They're more similar to battle leaves in that you have to go to the marked location on the map and manually activate the leave from the journal. When you arrive and initiate the quest, nodes will appear and your specific objective will be displayed. There's technically three different possible leaves here. You can tell what leaves are which by the leaf plate icon. While we usually don't have an actual choice of to what leaves we get due to how leave cycling works, but where possible, the leaves we want to prioritize are the Mikote Fishing and the Flower Girl. Both of these leaves are Evaluation Leaves, which have two benefits. The first is you can't fail them. One of the leaf types you can easily fail if you don't keep up on gear later. The other benefit is if you do the leave well. Look at the objective after starting the leave. This is where the term evaluation comes in. You are evaluated and based on your performance, get big bonuses for doing well. You will gain points for collecting items within the leave, based on your level versus the leave. Quick tip, gather anything that gives at least 7 or more points as that will give you a chance at the big 25% bonus. Just be wary of missing items. If you miss too many, you won't be able to get the boost at all. The Flower Girl is sets of 4 nodes, so it's shorter, but still good EXP. The Mikote Fishing is 8 nodes and worth huge amounts of EXP. But assuming both leaves aren't in the same spot, after completion, use the free teleport back to town to get your EXP. There's other bonuses besides the evaluation. All the leaves have a bonus for clearing it in under 5 minutes, which if you actually do the leave the moment you start it, it's not going to be an issue. You'll basically always get the speed bonus. But I started this at level 15.5 and ended up barely hitting level 18, out of just the one leave. This ends up being similar amounts of VXP as you level up, but these were level 10 leaves, not level 15 leaves. They were below my level tier. And yet I gained a good 4 levels from doing just 2 of them. Later on, this is going to be the amount of VXP you'll roughly gain for leaves at level, but it's still a huge amount. But in general, Leaves are going to be your biggest gains. But do your class quests for the gear. Unless you have money to burn, which... You might. Maybe. At this point. But let's get back to the quests. Your level 15 quests are going to be your first test of gathering high quality items. As mentioned, the maximum base chance is only 15% to gather high quality each time but we have special skills to boost that chance at the cost of some GP. This doubles our reasoning to keep gear up to date. If your gear sucks and you need to use GP to boost your gathering chance, that's less GP to use on boosting high quality chances. Leaf turn 1 is 100 GP for 10% for the node. Even boosting to 25%, you can end up with no high qualities anyway, so wasting more GP to boost gathering chance is going to make it even harder. But since we are starting to use a lot of GP, you'll be starting to hit the levels where we can use accessories now. Buy and equip even just the basic set and you'll get a huge boost to your GP count. I have these left over from leveling Fisher and it is definitely worth it. But the level 20 quest is a weird intersection between the two classes as an intro to Materia. Once again, we are tasked with collecting 99 of an item, an old item that used to be required to meld Materia. It is no longer used, except for these quests which remain specifically to push you in the direction of Materia. If you haven't been, be sure to go over your gear and extract any and all materia you can. This isn't a very demanding quest, but materia is going to give you a slight edge while leveling, especially if you get a lot of gathering plus materia. Any gathering materia you do have, I would recommend throwing into your gear. Keep stat caps in mind as shown in the meld window. 
While battle materia I recommend not bothering with yet, crafters and gatherers definitely do get some use out of materia this early on. You may even see this in the Materia Mata quest itself. I have only a 97% chance to gather, so even just one more meld could have given me the edge to hit 100%. But we do have our GP to bridge that gap too, since we've at least passed the 95% chance mark. Sharp Vision 1 is cheap enough that we won't run out of GP most likely. You may have also noticed that we're progressing two quests at once, because Botanist has the same exact quest for the same exact item. So instead of doing this twice, I'm going to just collect 198 carbonized matter with Miner to complete both quests in one trip. Given we have leaves to do, this is how I would recommend you do this too. But there's something I've been mostly glossing over since it hasn't really mattered yet. We have location effects, node bonuses. Beyond the minimum and maximum stats required for each item, specific nodes can have extra bonuses for even better stats. It could be increased gather chance, increased high quality chance, more attempts at the node, number of items per gather, they're a good tell of whether or not you have decent equipment or good equipment. Now that we're winding down, let's talk about stacking buffs, such as stocking Field Mastery and Flora Mastery at the same time. This is very expensive, inefficient, and is not at all a fix for bad gear. At best, if you are trying to do unspoiled nodes, this can maybe see use. Which we'll talk about unspoiled nodes in a bit. But let's take a quick mention about chains for skills like Brute Force and Deep Vigor. You may have noticed text about chains appearing while you gather. This is saying you succeeded to gather multiple times in a row within the same node. And you will need a chain of four to even use the skill. That means you need to have six attempts at a single node to use either of these skills, which Without node bonuses, or at least 600 GP, you aren't going to do that. Though, leave nodes are often also places where you can get 6 chances, because those nodes typically are special and have 6 chances as a base. But let me emphasize one last time, you may want to keep up with class quests to keep up on gear, and also remove material from old gear and place it into your new gear. Removing your materia is free, but using it to meld new gear is going to cost you until you learn to craft it. But for now, the costs are very low. Next, one of the leaves I did got me a cordial. Cordials will either cost you some gill on the market board, you can craft a version of them, or the best place, buy them from your grand company. This is a really important reason to rank your grand company up and is why provisions are more important for the seals than the EXP. But their use is instant GP every few minutes, since potion cooldowns is a few minutes long. Any long-term gathering projects can live or die based on your cordial count, since 300 GP per use is a huge amount of GP. But here we go. We can stop at level 25 to really zoom ahead. Level 25 is the point where leaves become god tier. From 25 all the way up to level 50, you can constantly do leaves and be 50 in no time at all. 2-3 to three leaves per set of levels and you will hit level 50. Just remember, you have to have a battle job to do the leave unlock quests per area meaning a battle job of a minimum level of 45 to use leaves all the way up to 50. But here is a chart of the path to follow for each level tier. This is the absolute best path to follow unless you have Heaven's Word Gathering unlocked, including the Firmament, which we'll talk about the Firmament in a much later video. Now for a bunch of smaller tips while gathering. 
As long as you are not the one who aggroed the enemy, while gathering, you are invincible. Just don't get hit while walking between nodes, especially if you're around higher level enemies. Someone battling nearby can hit you on the way, even if you have sneak active. It is only while you are actively gathering that you become invincible. I also skipped over hidden items. Hidden items have a random chance of appearing within a node, and there are later skills to force them to appear, if any exist. If an item in the gathering log is listed as hidden, that is what this means. If you want to gather a bunch of a specific item that is hidden, keep cycling through nodes. You don't even need to gather from them, just go through every node in a circle. Treasure Maps This is something you'll see a lot of as you gather. We'll go over the actual personal use of these in the next episode, but Miner and Botanist can find maps in their nodes. Maps are unique and you can hold only one at a time of each map type, though there are many, many, many types of maps. For now, feel free to gather one to make some money on the market board, as you can sell these. You can also only gather one map every 18 hours, no matter which gatherer picked it up. You can check this timer in the timers menu, like any other daily timer. But speeding far forward, we hit level 46. Truth of the Mountains and Truth of the Forests is how we gather from unspoiled and legendary nodes. I recommend starting on cross-classing now that we have these. You can only gather the correct nodes on the correct class, but when searching out unspoiled nodes, it helps to have both skills on both classes. You'll need to manually turn them on every time you swap classes, but do turn them on. By having these on, you'll be informed about unspoiled nodes when they spawn, as they are not always around. They spawn based on the in-game timer. You will get one shot at the node, and then that's it until the respawn time. So 12 or 24 in-game hours later. But at least you'll have it listed in the gathering log now. The gathering log does not tell you all the info, it is listed as question mark, question mark, question mark until you gather it. Clicking on the mystery location will give you at least a good starting point to wait around for it. But given a Realm Reborn nodes are on a 24 hour in-game cycle, also known as 70 real minutes, you could be waiting close to an hour for a node to appear if you just barely missed it. So while exploring and gathering, Turn these on and make it a point to prioritize grabbing these at least once. But because they're level 50 nodes, well, your gear might be very lacking to even get the items within the nodes. But again, nodes are based on the in-game Aorzean time, which the clock can show whenever you wish. The other option is to just Google the timers. Or use the Dark Matter Clusters, since once you gather it once, it shows you all the timers Dark Matter Clusters are connected to, including nodes from areas you've not even seen yet. Also, if you attempt to leave a node prematurely, it will warn you that this will end the node. So when you click on a node, be ready to use the full node. And if you need GP before you start the node, make sure you wait as long as you can. Just remember not to wait too long, as the node will despawn when the clock strikes the end of the window. So to recap that quick, the order of events is cross-class both truth skills onto both classes, make sure both truth skills are always on, wait for the time for the node to appear, prioritize the node, gather every item you can from a node for the first time so that your gathering log will now list all of the info since you have gathered it at least once, and then make it a point to farm it if it has an item that you need. As a side note, try typing slash alarm. This will open the alarms window, and you can make an alarm for yourself to remind you any time a specific node spawns. 
So let's say you want to gather dark steel ore at 1 a.m. Eorzean. You can set an alarm to yell at you every time 1 a.m. Eorzean rolls around. You'll have to do this every time you log in though, as alarms are not permanent. But when it comes to 1 through 49, that's it. 1 through 49, that covers everything, aside from any minor details that may have been missed. It was a shorter trip to 50 in general than Fisher. We got two classes done in around the same amount of time, and it was way more fun. Can you tell I don't like Fisher? Maybe you do, but I hope you find these enjoyable too, since they offer you many different sources of income and materials for your own crafting projects. Feel free to keep chopping away, but next time we get into Gatherers, we'll be talking at length of all the things we can do at level 50, and preparing ourselves for Heaven's Word Gathering. For now, we've smelled the trees and sulfur for long enough. We need to get back to our work as a Scion. Thanks for watching Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. Check the playlist in the description and the card on screen for the other episodes. Personally, I find these two very relaxing and fun when I'm doing it on my terms. But the best gathering is yet to come. We won't be seeing that until Heaven's Word though. But look forward to it if you've not found it already. But next time, the road to 50 shall be seen on our battle class. Well, I should say job, since you should be a job by now. But be sure to subscribe so you can see when we do. And may the power of Anna Nidhogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Bubalao, Fisher, Kathy Nock, Lemon, Meowfy, and Nick. If you'd like to become a patron, check the link in the description. Thanks for watching.